Good morning. I want to welcome everyone this morning as we come to uh, worship the Lord and just to give him praise. We do have a number of announcements that I want to go over. Um, on Tuesday, Mary Martha meeting, you have a special speaker, Meg Key, um, from Resonant Church. So that's at one o'clock in the foyer? In the foyer, okay. One o'clock in the foyer for ladies that would like to come to that. Um, Wednesday, we're starting our fire and ice, but we're going to be doing it um, here at the church and not at, uh, at our house. Um, well, <laughs> that, that is true. So um, anyway, that's at, at 7 o'clock, depending on the temperature, whether we have a fire or not. <laughs> We may, uh, we may uh, just just uh, do do the ice cream so in the story uh, and a devotion. So that's seven Wednesday night here at the church. Um, next Sunday there's a fireside, which is going to be hosted by Jim at Jim and Cheryl Dolby's house. Oh, at Cheryl's house. So if you don't know where they live, you can talk to Jim and Cheryl. Uh, and <laughs> you can talk to Cheryl after the service. That's going to be at 6 o'clock. So uh, bring your lawn chairs and uh, something to eat, and we'll enjoy a, uh, just a good time of fellowship uh, at, their, at their place. Any other, oh, one other announcement. So um, Ted Hendren's service is July 20th at 11. Um, we're going to, if you would like to uh, ride in the van, the church van will be leaving here at 945 on Saturday. So 945. Any other announcements? Okay. If you want to turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Last week and we were talking about being an imitator of God. And we're going to continue that this week. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. Walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality and any impurity or greed must not even be named among you, as is proper among the saints. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you are, were formerly darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Would you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. God, we, we, it's such a privilege to be able to come together, to be able to worship you, 
to be able to uh, hear your word spoken, to be able to just fellowship together. And so we give you praise and thanks. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd say the memory verse with me. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not let... (laughs) Galatians 5.13. Yeah, let's try that again. Say this with me. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not let use your freedom to indulge a sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Galatians 5.13. Yeah, that didn't work too well either. I typed it, and now it looks like I typed it wrong, but I hunt and peck, okay? This is how I type, and I may have, I may have, yeah, I did that. Thank you. I'm a hunt and pecker. Yeah, it's bad grammar. Thank you. Jim, that doesn't live anywhere. I appreciate that. I don't know where you live, Jim, but you and Mike need to have a talk. (laughs) We are going to sing, and yes, I'm still doing camp songs. I'm sorry I don't have a smoke machine, but you can pretend like you're around the campfire and the smoke is getting you or something. I don't know, because this is what I always think of, is sitting around the campfire at camp and pass it on. There. Got to think of that. (laughs) So here we get started. Pass it on. It only takes... Soon all those around can warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone you want to pass it on. What a wondrous time. The trees are budding, the birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you want to sing. It's fresh like spring, you want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I have found. You can depend on him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout him from the mountain top. Praise God. I want my world to know the Lord. Has come to to me. me. I want to to pass it on. You are the rock rock of my salvation. salvation. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope and my inspiration. Lord, unto you will I I cry. I believe in you, believe in you, for your faithful love to me. You have been my help in time of need. Lord, unto you will I believe. You are the rock of my salvation. You are the strength of my life. 
morning. Now this is the first Sunday of the month, so let's hold the communion elements and we'll take them together. During the Last Supper, Christ told us, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another 
even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Have you ever wondered, how am I to love others? What does that look like? How do I do that day to day? I suggest incorporating intercessory prayer into your daily life. As we pray for one another, we are paying attention to others' needs, caring for one another, and showing true Christian love for one another. Going before the Lord and setting our minds and hearts on the needs of others rather than ourselves softens our hearts towards others. Scripture, scriptures are filled with the example of intercessory prayer. Abraham pleaded to God to spare the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah on the account of any righteous people living there, which included his nephew Lot and Lot's family. This is in Genesis 18, which reads as follows. Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you indeed sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth deal justly? So the Lord said, If I find Sodom in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare the whole place on their account. God was unable to even find 10 righteous people. But as it says in Genesis 19, Thus it came about when God destroyed the cities of the valley that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot lived. Moses repeatedly interceded with God on behalf of the Israelites. One example is in Exodus 32 when the sons of Israel made a golden calf in Moses' absence while he was with the Lord on Mount Sinai. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are an obstinate people. Now then, let me alone. Let my anger may, bur- that my anger may burn against them, and that I may destroy them, and I will make of you a great nation. Moses implored the Lord to not destroy the sons of Israel. O oh Lord, why does your anger burn against your people whom you have brought out from the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak, saying, With evil intent, he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to destroy them from the face of the earth. Turn from your burning anger and change your mind about doing harm to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by yourself, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens, and all this land of which I have spoken I will give to you and your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord changed his mind about the harm which he said he would do to his people. Today, our Savior is interceding for us with God the Father. In Romans 8, 34, the Apostle Paul wrote, Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes with us. God listens to us when we pray for others. Just as he listened to Abraham and Moses, intercessory prayer builds up the body of Christ, the church. One way to start incorporating intercessory prayer into your daily life is to take notes when Pastor Mike tells us about prayer requests during the service. Throughout the week, set aside time to intercede on behalf of those needing prayer. Some in our congregation open the church directory daily and pray for those listed there. While waiting in line at the bank, in the store, or even driving, consider praying for those who catch your attention, even the annoying ones. This is a good way to start transforming your mind and heart to love others. You might find yourself becoming more compassionate, thinking of ways to help others, and seeing outside yourself. The Gospels describe Christ Jesus as having compassion for those he saw during his ministry. He, of course, paid the ultimate price in love for us. This morning, we share the Lord's Supper as a way of remembering the sacrifice in love that Christ showed us to redeem us and to seal us in love for himself. From 
Matthew 26, verses 26 through 28. Now while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Lord, we praise your name. We ask that you would give us the mind and heart of Christ, instill in us a compassion for others beyond understanding. We ask this so that you may be glorified and that we can be a testimony of your love. Thank you for blessing us beyond measure through Jesus, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. morning. I had to uh, re-familiarize myself with the mission of the month, Turner Retirement Homes, it says here. It also says it's in Turner, Oregon. Imagine that. So every month, the church sends a uh, an offering off to the mission of the month in support of missionaries, in support of this month, the Turner Retirement Home, and uh, that is what the church does every month with some of the funds that are donated by all of you, all of us. This morning, I can find my bookmark. Here we go. In keeping with the uh, the Old Testament theme that, that Brian started out this morning, I would like to read a short passage from Exodus chapter 35. And this is a short section of a very long story about what the uh, the Israelites did to put the tabernacle that the Lord commanded them to build together. This short section is entitled, The Tabernacle Offerings Presented. Exodus 35, starting with verse 20. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred, and everyone whose spirit was willing. And they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, for all of its service, and for the holy garments. They came, both men and women, as many as had a willing heart, and brought earrings and nose rings, rings and necklaces, all jewelry of gold, that is, every man who made an offering of gold to the Lord. And every man with whom was found blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, red skins of rams, and badger skins brought them. Everyone who offered an offering of silver or bronze brought the Lord's offering. And everyone with whom was found acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. All of the women who were gifted artesians spun yarn with their hands and brought what they had spun of blue, purple, and scarlet and fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred with wisdom 
spun yarn of goat's hair. The rulers brought onyx stones and the stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate and spices and oil for the light, for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a freewill offering to the Lord. All the men and women whose hearts were willing to bring material for all kinds of work which the Lord, by the hand of Moses, had commanded to be done. In reading the whole story, of course, you would probably, as well as I was, amazed at the sheer amount of material that the people of Israel amassed in order to build this tabernacle. I think uh, Randy read part of it here not too long ago and listed some of the things that they did and the amounts that it, <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. So as we consider what we're gonna put in the offering plate this morning, let us remember that people have been giving to the work of the Lord for a very long time some people have given way, way above and beyond. Some people aren't able to. And I'm sure that the Lord looks down on those who aren't able to. And he loves them as well. So let us pray about the offering we're about to give. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord that we can come to your house this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us and our ability to be able to give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. We ask you, Lord, to bless the gifts and bless the givers and bless those who are unable at this time. We ask you, Lord, to keep us mindful that the only reason we have any of the things that we have or the wealth that we hold is because you first gave it to us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you turn back to in your Bibles to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. This is actually where the, our text comes from, but uh, I wanted to reread what we talk, uh, the scripture from last week. God's word in Ephesians 5, 11. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. King James says here to redeem the time. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your hearts in the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. We have a praise today that um, uh, second junior camp at Wynema. They have 175 campers. So 
praise the Lord for that. Um, and we need to be praying, uh, praying for the staff um, as they minister to these young people. Uh, we need to be uh, praying also that uh, for this summer for our camps that uh, the Lord uh, would speak and to some of these young people and adults um, about um, going into the ministry, going on the mission field, um, for some of them coming to know the Lord. So, um, appreciate your prayers for uh, Sharon and as she's uh, headed to Kansas on Wednesday to go help my my folks for uh, for a time um, and the Goodells would like to have prayer for their nephew Joe Tucker who uh, is has a brain cancer and we need to be praying I was reading a couple of different um, newsletters this week about the uh, the people that are in prison because of their faith and some of them have been in prison for uh, a long time up to 20 years the pe ones that I, I was reading about and they could get out of prison if for some of them some couldn't but some could if they would deny their faith but they won't and so we need to be praying for those that are in prison that their faith would remain strong. Want to pray for Sydney, uh, the granddaughter of the Connors, that's very sick. Um, Cindy, the niece of the Dolbys, and Jeff, the nephew of the Dolbys, both have medical issues. So let's bring these before the Lord. Father, we. Uh, we come before you and we we give you praise God for the work that you're doing throughout the world I thank you for the work that you're doing at Camp Wainema and Koinia thank you for these 175 campers which is incredible and I just pray that you would uh, allow them to to grow in their faith that some of those campers would accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that a seed could be planted about the uh, about uh, becoming going into the ministry. Lord, we just ask that you'd be with the staff and uh, give them patience. <laughs> uh, just uh, give them a love for these young people and graciousness and kindness, God. Lord, we pray uh, for uh, Joe Tucker, and God, we, uh, we just pray for your will to be done, whether that's healing him or taking him home. Um, but we just ask that your hand would be upon him, that he'd feel your presence, that you would watch over the family, and uh, uphold them, walk with them through this valley. Father, we, we want to pray for the people who are um, that are in prison because of their faith. God, I, I just ask that you would encourage them today, that you would... Um, make your presence known to them. I, I ask that the food that they get would be enough to sustain them, God. And I pray that you would keep their faith strong in you. I pray for the, the guards in, in these prisons and that your spirit would work in their life to be able to show mercy and kindness 
to be open. Open to Jesus Christ. Father, we, we pray uh, for Sydney and God, we just, uh, we just ask that you would touch your healing hand upon her, asking that you'd give the doctors wisdom on knowing how to treat her, that she would turn to you for her hope and her guidance. Just watch over her family as well. We pray for Cindy and Jeff, and both of them having medical issues and asking for your, uh, for your healing for them. Father, we, uh, we want to pray for Zoe and, and just continue to watch over her and keep her strong, God, uh, and bring healing to her. Lord, I pray for Sharon as she uh, flies back to Kansas, that you'd give her safety, and uh, just uh, praying for my mom and dad that uh, for, for healing in, in their lives, God. God, we, I just ask now that you would help us to, to be open to your spirit as we study your word that we might become more and more like you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Being an imitator of God. We've been, uh, been looking at Ephesians, and it's a, such a, a wonderful book about the glorious church, and we... We see where in chapter 5 that Paul is encouraging us in some different ways in the way that we walk, walking in love, walking in light, uh, and, uh, and then today it's walking in wisdom, and to be able to to imitate God, we need to be able to know who God is, what he wants in our life, how he wants us to respond to different situations. We need that wisdom to follow him. And so in verse 11, it started out, do not participate in unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it's disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed in the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. And so, as we think about our faith, we have to have the courage to be able to, uh, to shine the light on evil, to speak out against what is wrong and what is sinful. It says, not only not participate in unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. We live in a time where people don't want us to talk about what is right and what is wrong, what is true and what is false, what is good and what is evil. And we also live in a time when many Christians have not been courageous in standing for what's is right, what is true, what is honorable. And instead, we've remained quiet when we need to take a stand. 
as I as I think about our country and the direction that we're going, and if I went back five years ago, I wouldn't have imagined, couldn't have imagined where where we were at today. And part of the reason is it, it's, it's that their evil exists, but it's that God's people were not standing up and were not shedding, shining our lights in the darkness, standing up for the truth, exposing that. Paul says it's disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done in them in secret. And I know that people are going, well, I don't want to push my views off of, on someone else. It is not pushing our views on someone else when we are letting our light shine. It is speaking the truth in love. It is showing people who Jesus Christ is and their need for a Savior. We cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't be ashamed of the truths that we find in God's word. And so because, unfortunately, the light in the church has dimmed over the years, it seems the darkness is growing. We need to pray for revival, don't we, in our churches? Praying for God's people to return to Him, to repent of their sin to live holy lives, to imitate God. I think it's appropriate for us today, this verse in verse 14, for this reason it says, awake sleeper, arise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. We've been sleeping too much in the church. Some of you lure during the worship service. But, but I'm not talking about that physical sleep, I'm saying, but not being aware of what's going on. And what God is calling us to do. Verse 15 that says, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. If we're going to be imitators of God, we have to be careful how we walk. We have to be wise. Verse 16, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Or redeem the time. Redeeming the time just means to, it, uh, to redeem means to buy it back, to regain possession of it. Time is a gift from God. And none of us know how much time we have, do we? But when he says redeem the time, it isn't about a better calendar ma management. It's not about uh, making a bunch of lists or putting more on that list. It's about living a faithful, dedicated life to the Lord. It's about recognizing that, hey, my time in this life is short. 
What are my priorities? What are the things that are important to me? And more importantly, what are the things that are important to God? Do we wake up in the morning, say, okay, God, this day is yours. Sometimes our calendars and lists get in the way of people because we become so focused on all the things that we have to do that we miss the opportunities that God brings to us to serve other people. To do acts of kindness. To take time to pray with someone who's hurting. There's two little boys who went swimming in a pool in, in Louisville. And one of them walked up to this woman she, he didn't know and asked her, he goes, do you go to Sunday school? And she said, well, yes, I do. And he said, well, would you look after my quarter then while I go swimming? Imitators of God, people who are trustworthy, people who love one another. And as we, as we think about our walk and the wisdom that God wants us to have, to be able to Redeem the time that he has given us. When we think about redemption, we think about the price that Jesus paid for our sin, that he has redeemed us by his broken body and his shed blood. But when we think about redeeming our, the time that God has blessed us with, we need to know that God has given us work to do. Psalm 139, 16 says, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Think about that. All your days of your life, every one of them, was written in God's book. That must be a huge book. Before one of them came to be. Even before we were born, God had written out the things he had planned for us. Visions 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And I am convinced that there are times in my life that I miss those good, good works that God had planned for me because I was too concerned about a list that I had of things I had to get done. Now, I'm not against making lists or trying to get things accomplished. All I'm saying is that we have to allow God to work and the Spirit to lead us into those good works that He wants us to do. Part of our redeeming our time is giving that time to God and asking Him, God, what do you want me to do today? 
And when we think about that, when we give God that time, and that can be at home, it can be when we're out and about, our focus shifts to godly things. Our focus shifts to become looking at people more than tasks. Showing kindness. Speaking a word of encouragement to other people. Really listening and then praying for the people. Another way that we can, well, before I get there, verse 17, it says, So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Talking about wisdom, the will of God in our life. And sometimes... We just seek God's will for the big issues that we're facing, right? And we, we pray, God, tell me what I'm, I should do here. But it is important that we seek God's will every day. Not just on the big issues that we face in a crisis moment, but in the small things in our life as well. Verse 18, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit, and then and he, talking about understanding what the will of God is, and, he's, and all of this runs together, it says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody with your heart to the Lord. Part of the way that we can become imitators of God and walk in wisdom is by worshiping together as a family. Speaking to each other in psalms, as far as sharing scripture with each other. Speaking to one another in hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. How does that help us to imitate God? Well, because when we are worshiping God... We're not worshiping ourselves. We're not thinking about our problems. We're allowing the Spirit to work in our lives, and we can give thanks, which is verse 20. Always give thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. Always give thanks for all things. I was reading about a, a young lady who had, she had been a Christian for two years and in China and she wasn't going to a, um, a an approved church. It was a house church. They had to meet in secret. And a number of them were, were arrested. She was put in, in jail. Uh, her family tried to get her to sign a thing rejecting her faith. But she wouldn't do it. She was put into a cargo container 
and was her prison and jail for in solitary confinement for two years. During the day, it would. There were times that she didn't think she would survive the heat during the night, but many times the cold. And yet she said that God would bring to verses to mind. Verses about that if, how Jesus said that uh, talking about suffering for him. And she said after uh, after that period of time, she got transferred to an, another part of the prison, and she was able to have, there were other prisoners there. And one of those was a, a fellow Christian. And she said that that time of being with her, of the encouragement that they could give to one another, was such a precious thing. Sixteen years, and she didn't give up her faith. She was released. She said it was very difficult for her as far as adjusting to how the world had changed. She's now teaching children about the Lord, but she looks back on those 16 years and she's not sorry that she kept her faith. She's not sorry that she suffered for her faith. In fact, she sees it as something that God used to help mold her and make her. When we, God calls us to imitate him, it's not just imitating him and following him when things are good. But th when things are go wrong, when things are tough, when we might be persecuted for standing up for the truth, God calls us to remain faithful to him and to stay true to his word. What is, what is God's will for your life right now? What is it that God wants you to do today to serve him? to let your light shine for him. It might be that God's been placing on your heart someone you need to talk to about the Lord. But you've been hesitant to do that. God may be calling you Calling you to repent of something that's in your life that you haven't turned away from that sin. Could be that there's someone that you know you should just call to give a word of encouragement to. So I want to I want to ask you this week. If you're like me and you make a list to do list, and make sure that there's a section in there. God, who do you want me to bless this week? 
just allow the Spirit to, to speak to you, to be open. God will, may bring someone's name. It may be that you're just going about your life and you meet someone and it's like, oh, this is one of the people that God wanted me to bless this week. But let us walk in wisdom and redeem the time and use it for his glory and not for our own. If you have a decision to make, come as we stand and we sing. Father, help us to have the grace to allow other people to serve us. God, I ask that you would go before us and that you would help us this week to redeem the time that our focus can be on you, our focus can be on people, that you will help us to get the things on our list done. But God, that that would include serving other people as well. We love you, God. I look forward to seeing what you have for us, what is written in your book already for us this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.